All right, guys, on our Facebook page, I've been getting a lot of people asking me how I build my, my bulk chicken feeders. Um, I'm gonna, I have to make another one, so uh, I guess I'll show everybody how I do it. Uh, what I use, this is a 30 gallon uh, container, I guess, barrel, but it's got the rubber seal on the lid and stuff to keep your feed dry. And, uh, and it also has a lot of lock ring. Uh, a lot of people you see will use the closed top barrels and cut the top off. That's kind of defeating the purpose. I mean, uh, I would not use one of those, but you can. You can if, you, if that's all you have, you can use it. But the, I always use the ones with the removable lids. That way, they can still seal it. Uh, I also had a lot of people ask if I can make one rodent proof. Um, well, I mean, you're going to be drilling holes in it this size, so. I don't see how you can make this rodent proof at all, you know, because they got to stick their heads in here. And if you got, if you have a rodent problem, I wouldn't suggest something like this anyway, because it would be like a picnic for them all the time. But, but I have been asked that question, and I don't see how you can make it rodent proof. This thing will hold probably three bag, three fifty pound bags of feed once it's done. Uh, what I got to do, what my parts, all well, the tools that I need, I have a three and a half inch hole saw. This three and a half inch is perfect size for this right here to fit through the barrel. Perfect size. All right. So, and this is called, um, I can't remember if it's called a street elbow or not. I can't remember the term for it. But as you can see, it's got, um, this is the flange that goes over the pipe. And then the fitting actually fits on here. If you can see, it's got a lip on it. I don't know what these are called, but this is kind of used because this lip goes inside against the barrel and holds it in place. And uh, I'll show you what I do with that. But. Uh, these are the kind I use, and I'll be cutting like a lip out of it right here. For I'll show you that too. But uh, anyway, then I'll be using these couplings right here. But I actually be cutting these in half because you only need half of it, and, and I'll show you why. But uh, I buy buy them this way and cut them in half because it's cheaper this way. That these parts are pretty expensive, so so you probably have seventy, eighty bucks on one of these feeders after the barrel and all but you know a regular feeder at the stores what a hundred bucks something like that so I, I, these are way more feeding last way longer we've used them for a long time we've never had any problems whatsoever out of them all right so anyway the other tools i need is my jigsaw of course to cut that lip out that i was showing you here to cut this lip out i'll show you when i do that and uh i'm gonna put four ports in this one so i'll need four of these elbows I only cut this in half, and I'll make two, and I have another one, so I have a total of four of those. All right. Other than that, I have my saw set out. Uh, this, I don't recommend this in any way because this is actually pretty dangerous the way I'm going to cut this. You can actually cut it with anything. It's just I choose to cut it with my, my miter saw. Uh, it could jump out and cut your hands off, so do not do as I do. Disclaimer. Uh, I'm not telling you to do it this way. It's just the way that I'm going to do it. All right, uh, let me uh, get everything set up, and I'll be right back. All right, uh, got everything out of the way. <clears throat> like I said, I need a three and a half inch hole saw. Uh, I have a tape measure, but normally I don't measure these because I've made so many of them. I, I just know where I'm going to drill, and the perfect spot is in this lip right here. Let me bring the barrel a little closer. But in this lip. There's a lip right here, right dead center of that lip is perfect for them elbows and you still have like maybe an inch to the bottom of the bar, the barrel and you'll see why why we need that. But anyway, I always drill right center of that and then you can just kind of center it the way you want it. I always start off right in the middle of the two handles, right dead center, then one on each side where the handles are and then one in the center of the back, that's four port. So that being said, let me drill these, set this off. I'll go ahead and get these holes drilled. I'll, sh I'll show you how to do one, and then uh, uh, we'll cut, and I'll do the rest of them off, off camera, of course. All right, what I do, like I said, is kind of center it in the, two, in the middle of the two handles, in the center of this lip. The best, it don't have to be perfect, but the best you can get it there is drill a hole. Pretty much that simple. Now, now what you have is a three and a half inch hole right there. 
So what I normally do with that is I'll take, because you don't want your chickens eating his shavings here, I'll take my knife and I'll just kind of scrape it, scrape the shavings off. burn tools for this but you, you can do it just fine with your knife just take your time and scrape it a little bit it don't have to be perfect like I said it's just a chicken bigger anyway that's exactly what you have right there three and a half inch hole and uh, as I was saying these lips right here fit perfectly in this three and a half inch hole like that that's pretty much all there are to it let me uh, get the rest of these drilled and I'll be right back all right as you can see I got four holes drilled and like I said they're all center of that lip and I just kind of centered it two handles I put one in the, in the middle I put one just kind of the best of good don't have to be perfect you don't have to go through marking it or anything and uh, what I got to do now is I need to cut these two couplings in half if you can see there's like a lip inside there i don't know if you can i don't know if it's going to see that or not but there's a lip in here i try to cut in the center right through that lip you don't have to you can use the whole thing if you wanted but uh these things are kind of expensive and i like to get the best i can out of them so i'm going to cut it in half and that way one will make two and i need four of course so i've got two fitting or two couplings i need to cut in half but as i said before this is not the way you should be doing this. Uh, this is just the way I'm going to do it. Uh, if I lose a finger, I lose a finger, I guess. But uh, this is probably pretty dangerous. I'm going to cut this with a chop saw. But the uh, worst it could do is cut my finger off, I guess. But anyway, this is how I do it. I don't recommend you doing this at all. So, anyway... There we go. One made two. We just got to deburr it. And uh, yes, we are on the porch, but it looked like it was going to rain, so I'd rather do it on the porch and not be in the rain. Uh, there is plastic shavings all over the porch we'll have to get up, but I mean, it makes perfectly good cuts. Then I tire I'm a little off on the lip, but I'll have to live with it because I really don't want to hold it that close in there unless I can get like a board or something, maybe to hold it and just chop the board now which may be may be a good idea let's try that let me get it set yeah that's that's gonna be real shady right there so i don't know if i want to do that or not we'll try it uh here we go Still didn't get all the lip off of it, so might have been a little crooked, actually. Yeah, that'll work. Alrighty. Uh, well, let me see if I can get the rest of that lip out of it. This is kind of this is real shady right here now. catastrophic failure I have one more to cut uh, like I said I don't recommend this and I should be wearing safety glasses and probably not touching it nowhere near with my hands but it is what it is so uh, let me get it centered the best I can that right there center and just go slow uh, Got 
too. This one does still have part of the lip in it, I think. Somewhere or another it's cutting it sideways. I might have it off a little bit. I may have the saw off a little bit, I guess, but either way, that's good as I'm gonna do it because the last time you seen what happened. So I'm gonna leave it like that. But yeah, I should be wearing safety glasses, I know. All right, uh, let me get everything ready and I'll be right back. All right, like I said, I'm gonna cut uh, four of these in which I need to cut a lip off and you'll see why. Um, I'm gonna mark it right here. Just, I mean, I know where to cut it, but I'm just mark it where you guys can see. You'll see the parting lines in it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right through here. I don't know if that'll zoom in or not, but where I marked it up and around, I'm gonna cut that out. That's so when it's down in there, the feed can fall down and under, it'll go under this. And when they stick their head in here, the feed will be coming under here. So it, it works really well this way. So let me cut this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And again, I don't recommend you doing it this way. Uh, this is fairly dangerous, but it's just the way I do stuff. I cut this notch out of it here. See the back's still there. That's so when the feed goes down, it can fall in here and just catch it, hold it there. But it'll still be like an inch up off the bottom of the barrel. But uh, that's how I'm going to do all of them. Uh, so let me cut the other three and I'll be right back. Alright, as I said, I have my four cut now uh, because it's a four port barrel. Uh, all of them, like I said, has the lip notch out here. Um, the way that I do this is I put these in from this side. Right, see, it won't come. It won't come all the way through because it's because that lip I showed you on the fit in itself. Okay, a lot of people's going to frown on this, but this is the way I do it. I take the uh, the PVC cement. <clears throat> all right. I take one of the things that we just cut in half and almost lost a finger on over here. Uh, what I do is I take the cement, just like just like blowing a water pit. You know, go around it, blow it good, and then I put some on the coupling, yeah, like that. Then I put it down here. I reach. You have to reach in here and hold it. And then put the coupling on. And then what I try to do, move that out of the way, try to hurry before it sets up. I take a rubber mallet and smack it on there really tight. Well, as tight as I can get it. Okay, just like that. Alright, so there it is. Nice locked in place. Can't come in or out. And uh, I do the other three the exact same. like that I'll of course I'll wipe the excess glue out but uh, I guess a lot of people frown on the glue but uh, we've done this for years and I've never killed a chicken with it yet uh, and the eggs that they lay hasn't, hasn't killed us yet so evidently so anyway let me get the uh, let me get the other three done like that and I'll be back and show you the next step I do alright guys for my next step is uh, I use some silicone 
100% waterproof silicone. Um, like I said, I've used this numerous times on all the other barrels I've ever built. Um, hasn't hurt anything yet. Um, I would say it's probably not food grade, but I mean, it's silicone. Uh, what I want to do is uh, go around the ports to keep water out. And then I also put just a little bit around the top. I'll show you inside the barrel. But uh, I'll do one right quick. Brand new tubes, so I have to open it. Okay. So what I do is I put just a little a bead around it. Like that. all four of them probably easier to do with caulking with a silicone with a gun I guess caulking gun or whatever I scrapped a little tube because I don't need that much You can leave this stuff out if you want, if you don't want to put silicone or glue, because you can actually put the fitting on there and it holds pretty good without even putting the glue on it. Um, but I just put glue on it because I don't want it to come off ever. You know, it's just, I just don't want to have to do it again on the same barrel. I mean, I could build other barrels, but um, I don't think it would come off all the thing. I don't think it would ever come off. So, put a little bead around this one, the last one. One thing you definitely want this to dry before you put feed in it. So I'll probably let it set until tomorrow before I put anything in it. Uh, but on the inside now, what I try to do, I don't know if you can see this or not, but like on the inside, just around the tops, I'll put a little bit in just in case, you know, uh, moisture is to ever get down in there. I doubt it ever will, but I mean, you never know. And really, what I do it for is to uh, kind of lock them in place too. For the silicone is like like glue. You might have to mess with it. Knows what I'm talking about. Uh, it's hard to get loose. Uh, so all right, guys. I'll finish this and I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, as you can see, I've got all four in. The silicone, I took my finger and went around it on all four. And like I said, I won't put any food in this until probably tomorrow. I'll give it good time to good and dry. Um, a lot of people say that the chickens will peck the silicone off. Um, that hasn't happened. I ain't gonna say that they won't, but I will say that that hasn't happened to any of ours yet. Uh, all the bulk feeders that I've made still have the silicone on it because uh, I do check that to see if they are eating at it or anything like that and so far they have not so but a lot of people will say that the, they'll pack at the silicone but mine have not I mean yours might mine have not but with that being said uh, like I said these are the, the locking ring it has a rubber seal all the way around it put it on put it up there Lock it down. Like I said, I think this one holds maybe three bags of feed, 50 pound bags of feed. Uh, as I was saying earlier on one of our other videos, I, I take a, most of these right here, I take like the laying mash. I take the 16% laying mash. Uh, I dump in half a bag and then I take some of the uh, uh, other stuff that we put in them and I sprinkle in, I mix it and put another half a bag and mix it. But uh, the soy meal is what I'm trying to say. I mix some soy meal in with ours, and a lot of people don't like that, but I, I do add it. Um, it's just stuff that we do. I don't, I'm not saying for anybody to do this. Definitely don't cut them the way that I did, because you've seen what happened right there. Um, if you can cut it the safer way, I, I'd recommend doing that. But don't take, don't do anything that I do. Uh, I'm just showing you how we do it. And uh, I'll just be honest with you, this is probably the ultimate bulk feeder for chickens 
Zero waste. Zero waste. They, they call it, they can't drag it out. Nothing can be wasted out of it. Um, like I said, it holds probably 150 pounds of feed. Uh, one, we fill it up once, and it probably lasts, what, a month? You know, lay a mash? Something yes. like that. It probably lasts a month. Uh, the 55 gallon up there in our chicken barn, I have the 55 gallon ones too, and that's what I normally mix our feed in. Like, uh, uh, we take, uh, uh, what is that, black oil sunflower seeds, uh, wheat, rye, corn, whole corn, crushed corn, and uh, I even sprinkle a little bit of diamaceous earth in it. Uh, it it's actually, uh, it's, it's, it's good for them to kind of ingest a little bit of it because if they have any internal parasites or anything like that, but uh, also it keeps the bugs out of their feed also. Um, and we always sprinkle it inside the coop. But uh, so far, so far, these things right here have worked out to be probably the best thing that I've ever made as far as chickens and uh, chicken keeping. Uh, these and the waters, because uh, the water, I add um, apple cider vinegar to our water and uh, in, inside the barrels up there, there, one of them is 35 gallon and one of them is 55 gallon. And uh, the 55 gallon, we filled it up three weeks ago, something like that. Uh, and it's still, you know, three quarters full. And we have that little pool in there for them to drink water out of too. Um, I'll do a water on video one day too, but it's pretty much self-explanatory. You drill a hole, stick the cup in there and tighten it down. I mean, that's pretty much all there are to it. And then you fill it full of water. That's how you build the water. But these feeders, like I said, I've been getting quite a bit of uh, interest on Facebook about how I make them and stuff like that. And I figured I would show how I do it. Uh, not everybody does it this way. But this is exactly how I do it, and like I said, so far this is probably the ultimate bulk feeder for us. Anyway, all right. Thanks, you guys. Please share and subscribe. Oh, uh, before we leave, uh, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, please like, share, and subscribe our videos. And Buddy says. <laughs>